Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today Show. Huh. Today I have a subject that I'm going to be discussing that's near and dear to my heart and probably about 95% of the population of the United States of America. And it is on anxiety. Oh, different forms of anxiety, different degrees. Oftentimes, most anxiety is just very, very temporary. It goes and it comes. But when anxiety goes on for more than six months or reaches certain symptoms, it can be what we call acute. Um, and it can manifest itself as in panic attacks. Most experts believe that they're principally caused by neurotransmitter issues in the brain or the inability of the liver to convert lactate in the blood into pyruvic acid. And women will have or tend to have more problems with that than men. So there is some potential biochemical explanations uh, for stress. If someone has burnout adrenal glands as well, the um, excessive amount or continual amount of adrenal, or should I say ex adrenal exhaustion, the continued amount of adrenaline and cortisol will also keep stress, uh, stress, and they're the stress hormones, will keep stress high as well, physiologically. Chronic and generalized uh, anxiety is a milder form of anxiety, doesn't show itself generally in panic attacks, um, and the symptoms um, aren't as intense. You know, they can go on for six month periods of time, but they're just not as intense as someone who experiences a chronic every day and will review the symptoms type of anxiety. There's so many different degrees and different gray level degrees in between and physiologically, emotionally caused, so many different factors that come into play that we'll discuss later on. It's very, very complex. Um, and every individual is an individual when it comes to anxiety. So throwing a Xanax out to somebody when they say they've got anxiety without knowing or discussing any of these other factors is probably a pretty big mistake because these have to be addressed uh, first before you can make a proper determination on medications or on supplementation as well. Uh, customer or patient has to do their research. Um, symptoms of anxiety, <laughs> probably most of us know most of these symptoms except for the severe ones. But restlessness, tension, you'll tremble, you'll get the little mild shakes when you're anxious. I, that happens to me. Heart palpitations, dry mouth, sweaty palms, diarrhea, mood swings. The list is pretty lengthy if you look on there and, and we've got the good camera um, uh, on there. We can kind of see muscle tension, spasms, you get back aches, hypertension. It can show itself in so many different ways. It's like, wow, which, and am I actually suffering from anxiety? Now, panic attacks are pretty, pretty clear. They are your heart pounds, rapid, difficult breathing. I mean, literally. <sighs> And you'll even see these people that sometimes have to put the bags around their mouth um, in order to get the CO2, the carbon um, dioxide levels up. Um, you feel dizzy, weak. It can last a few seconds or up to a few hours. And the thing about panic attacks is only about 70% of them actually over a period of time have been found to be treatable by standard um, medicine, uh, standard pharmaceuticals. So hence the further discussion. Okay, root causes. Now it's kind of funny when you think about these. Obviously stress we know can cause anxiety, but so can depression. So if people are going through divorces, a spouse dies, that type of thing, that depression can flip over back and forth into anxiety because the hormones and stress hormones and how we deal with depression can show itself in the shakes and all those wonderful other symptoms I just went over. Disturbed sleep can cause anxiety. You gotta have your sleep or you're like a drunken sailor. Or you'll get the shaky, you won't feel good, you can't react and respond. Certain hormones don't work well. Um, adrenaline, cortisol don't work well when you don't get adequate amounts of sleep. Caffeine, sugar, nicotine, alcohol and drugs. Uh-oh. So if you're there down in your three or four cups of coffee, puffing away on the cigarette, and you got four teaspoons of sugar in each cup, you got a problem. If you come home from work and you sit there and drink your five or six beers, that can, and you've got anxiety, that can trigger it. Certain uh, drugs and medications can trigger it. Even acid redux drugs can contribute. You know, a lot of people have the, we've had discussions about this before, but the acid redux drugs can, can make for real severe anxiety. Food allergies and environmental toxins. There are certain toxins I know, even my own son, that when he eats them, 
He gets anxious. If he does red dye number 40 and has a red sucker, he's anxious and he's all over the place. So finding what we're allergic to and getting rid of those type of 3,000 chemicals that the U.S. government allows in our food uh, is actually a very good idea as far as being able to eliminate an additional contributing cause to uh, uh, anxiety. Poor nutrition. If you don't give your body nutrients, it can't physiologically respond to stress. Our bodies are meant to be able to respond to stress and then de-escalate. If you don't have good nutrition and proper amounts of vitamins, you can't. If you have blood sugar issues, um, and where your sugars are rising and falling and going all over the place, you can't deal with stress physiologically. You just can't. Um, it just goes in absolute shutdown mode. Sugar is probably one of the biggest things that people ingest. Sugar and alcohol or white sugar, flour, pasta, all those things all contribute to the inability to be able to properly react to stress. Um, adrenal and thyroid problems, a little bit of an adrenal exhaustion as I mentioned on IAD, uh, where you're unable to regulate adre adrenaline and cortisol levels. Thyroid problems or even thyroid medications can contribute to anxiety. All factors that you have to review yourself and discuss with your healthcare professional. Mitral valve prolapse. Some of us, including myself, have a small uh, mitral valve issue. That can contribute to uh, anxiety as well, too. So you take all these factors in control uh, here, and if you add them all up together, a good portion of our population has a combination of all of them. Hence, you're going to have anxiety. So supplementation, and, and this is a little bit complicated. In that, and we're going to talk about diet a little further on and some other techniques that you can use to help you uh, deal with uh, anxiety. But supplementation is broad. I've seen probably the best results with homeopathic medicines, one in particular called Rescue Remedy. But there are certain um, homeopathic remedies. Remember, homeopathy was the approved, first approved American Medical Association treatment over, what, 150 years ago. So very safe, can be taken with other medications. You can look at various symptoms very specifically for what symptoms accompany your anxiety and use the proper homeopathic for that. Rescue Remedy is a pretty broad spectrum type of, of um, it's not really homeopathy, it's a Bach flower essence remedy, and it also has been proven and shown to reduce anxiety, and it's got 60 years worth of proof. When your average drug is only a couple of years, think we got a good comparison to compare it to. There is a whey protein peptide in a product that I know as, uh, and I left an R out of here, it's called tryptazin. In double blind placebo studies it was found to be more effective than Xanax. And guess what? No side effects. Isn't that cool? No side effects. You take one a day, it costs about a buck a pill, and more effective than Xanax to reduce anxiety. Okay, uh, A good multiple vitamin high in Bs. Remember how I said when you have poor nutrition you can't physiologically deal with anxiety or stress or anxiety. Um, you need to get that multi high in Bs because when that stress hits those B vitamins help prevent vascular damage, they help you, your nervous system properly react and respond. So at the very bare minimum, if you've got anxiety, get a good multiple high in B vitamins. And I'm not talking about something off the grocery shelf counter. I'm talking about something good that you know absorbs. Um, a good health food store is where you want to get it. Calcium, magnesium, uh, particularly the citrate forms or citrate forms, which come are vegetable sources. They relax you. They have a very calming effect on muscles. They relax muscles as well as on your nervous system. So if you're calcium magnesium deficient or if you're sitting there down in a lot of soda that depletes your calcium magnesium or you're doing diuretic types of things, good luck with relaxing any of your muscles and not having anxiety. So this is very, very important. The dosage depends normally, uh, most I see on the research is between 1200 and 1500 milligrams of calcium and between 4 to 800 milligrams of magnesium. Just depends on your body size. Food grade iron, and I'm not talking about ferrous sulfate that you get prescription or off the shelf at your local drugstore. We want something that actually the body can recognize as iron. Not old railroad tie uh, or, rail, or old uh, iron, old fill, what they use, um, metal um, types of filings that they chemically alter with sulfuric acid to get ferrous sulfate. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things that come from food. 
iron that comes from food. And most of our food nowadays is pretty deficient in iron, so there are supplements out there. There's a couple of companies that make them, uh, whole food sources of iron. If you are deficient in iron, you will be anxious, okay? So, especially for those uh, women out there that tend to flow heavy, run low iron, you get the dark circles under your eyes, you get dizzy, get your iron levels checked because that definitely can contribute to you being tired all the time, which contributes to anxiety, but also your inability physiologically to deal with stress. Um, mineral ascorbate ester C, and this one is kind of a surprise because most people don't think in terms of vitamin C as being a natural, twi tr I can say the word, tranquilizer a natural a tranquilizer. Now, I'm not talking about ascorbic acid because if you do that high a dosage, five to 10,000 milligrams of C, um, your urine, you're gonna burn and you're gonna pull calcium out of your bones if you do the ascorbic acid form that you get at your local drugstore. So you need to look for mineral ascorbate or ester C forms. Um, and I think probably the best description I found is it's needed for brain and adrenal glands uh, and for them to function properly. Also, those high levels of C also enable the liver. Remember that enzyme I told you that kind of helps you deal with lactate? It also helps with the, uh, being able to form and utilize that enzyme in the liver as well. So natural tranquilizer, actually also very good for allergies this season too because it's a natural antihistamine. DL phenanolene. 600 to 1400 milligrams per day. It increases endorphins. This is a synthetic form of, of an amino acid known as L-phenalanine. Phenalanine, I'm gonna say the word right. I just say DLPA. Um, when you increase endorphins, endorphins are your feel-good hormones. Feel-good hormones, anti-anxiety. There you go. Now you gotta take it on an empty stomach and there's certain types of medications that you uh, can't take with it. So once again, you need to look that up or your healthcare provider. And most medical doctors don't know about that. So when you go into uh, a store, it usually says it on the bottle, what types of medications you can't take it with. There's certain Mayo inhibitors and other drugs you don't do DL phenaline with. But we've also used this under the, um, the supervision of doctors to help taper treat people off of pain medication as well too because it naturally raises endorphin levels. L-glutamine, L-tyrosine, those are both amino acids. They also have a mild tranquilizing effect and L-glutamine also helps with sugar cravings too. And tyrosine helps with some of the fatigue that goes along with all the anxiety. Very safe, very effective. Uh, L-tyrosine though, if you've had skin cancer, can't do L-tyrosine. There's just something to do with, uh, with malignancy in that regard. Um, very helpful though as far as keeping things mild, especially if you have adrenal issues. The L-tyrosine helps with the fatigue that accompanies the stress and anxiety with adrenal, um, compromised adrenal. Uh, L-theanine, mm -mm -mm. and this works with kids and adults, not well kids as well as adults. And what theanine does is it changes the brainwave pattern from a very high stress beta wave pattern to a very calm alpha wave pattern. Uh, we see it a lot utilized on ADHD kids who tend to have a little higher anxiety, but it works. I know for me, I'll take it if my mind just won't shut down when I'm in bed and I'm thinking about everything with the stores and the family and all, I'll take uh, one to 200 milligrams of L-theanine. It quiets my mind. It brings me into an alpha state in the brain waves. Very safe, very, very effective. Inesitol, there was a very good study that was conducted with inesitol 12 to 18 grams in divided dosages reduce panic attacks from 10 a week to about three and a half a week. Boy, if you've experienced a panic attack before, and I have, it feels like you're having a heart attack. And so if you can reduce those with an inositol type of powder, uh, very helpful, easy to take. You can mix it with a little bit of juice in divided dosages, okay? That's something to keep in mind, and it's very, relatively inexpensive as well, too. Phenyl feverfew helps relieve the gastrointestinal, emotional types of upsets. Flax oil, there was a study on phobias. Now, see, phobias are a type of anxiety as well. Three quarters of the people that were given just two to three teaspoons of flax oil, cheap and expensive thing, three quarters of them experienced less phobia problems, and the, most of the studies were done on acrophobia. 
So anyway, ah, for all those people out there who have those phobia issues, very helpful. 5-HTP uh, raises serotonin. Now we have to be kind of careful with this because sometimes when you raise serotonin, it can increase anxiety. But if you have a depression associated with the anxiety, 5-HTP might be something that you might want to give a shot, 50 to 100 milligrams a couple of times a day. It can be very helpful. Oh, as with all of our shows, Diet, diet, and diet. Um, complex carbs at every meal in combination with some source of protein. Fruits and vegetables to alkali the blood. Once again, avoiding the caffeine and alcohol. Refined sugars and processed foods causing extreme sugar changes. And then avoiding allergy triggering foods. Most of these we already reviewed, but I wanted to throw this diet section here just so you have an idea of um, lumping all the diet types of uh, benefits if you do some slight modifications. Exercise releases stress hormones 30 minutes a day. Whoa. You will notice a big benefit. When I miss my exercise or I have other things going on, which is rare, but I sometimes I do, I don't feel near as good and I don't get rid of the stress hormones. So the um, excellent to do it in the afternoon when you get off work, because uh, if you do exercise too late in the day, it can keep you awake. But uh, strongly suggested to release cortisol stress hormones, reduce. Yoga, <laughs> I thought this is, this is kind of funny. We know yoga reduces stress, you know, the little pretzel moves and all, and a lot of them are actually very simple and, and can be done uh, without, with very e a lot of ease, but some of them are a little bit more complex. OCD is a form of anxiety. Substantial, substantial help with people who suffer from OCD anxiety. Yoga. Go figure, huh? Somehow, some way, it just helps with the movement of energy in that regard. Relaxation techniques, counseling. You can get a good counselor to help you do with the actual causes of the stress and maybe perhaps give you some coping skills to deal with things that help trigger anxiety, to learn some particular breathing types of skills, relaxation techniques. These are all available out there with a good psychologist no drugs, we're talking psychologists who can work with you on those type of um, relaxation techniques. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the fitness portion. I'm gonna show you a couple of pressure points you can use that can help relieve anxiety. Thank you. Welcome to the fitness portion of our show, although I don't know if I should call this fitness or a exercise in energy. That would probably be a better way to put it. I'm going to show you a couple of pressure points that you can press when you're having anxiety, when you're in the middle of nowhere, uh, that may be able to help reduce some of that anxiety and, and center you and balance you a little bit more. This one is actually virtually you're almost hugging yourself. And uh, what I suggest is there are some pressure points right here between, if you look at the muscle, there's some separation here. You're going to press your thumb into that, your thumb in on the other side, and you're going to just kind of hug yourself a little bit. You're going to hold those areas. Oh, actually, I can actually feel. It's very, very calming. It holds that particular energy. You can actually even massage it a little bit in that regard as well, too. Hold that area probably for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then you can switch over and do the next one, which will be on the wrist area about two inches above the wrist. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to press right in this area, right down here, okay? And hopefully that angle is better. Look at all my veins sticking out there. And you're going to press right in, right, kind of pretty much right in the middle, right there, maybe a little bit off towards the, the bony part here. And just kind of hold that down and hold it probably for about 30 seconds. And then you can change it over and hold it for about 30 seconds more. Something that works really good with kids' anxiety, and um, actually adults can do this too, is your fingers in oriental medicine, something called shinjinzitsu, have a, have a lot of energy to them. And sometimes just holding your fingers, hold the finger up, and you hold it with the opposite hand for about Oh, what 15 uh, seconds to uh, to 30 seconds and just kind of hold them there it gets you in balance and very focused 
and in what we call the now, so as to speak, to where you're thinking about doing something here and you're not focusing on your anxiety or your stress. Give those a try. I hope that'll help. Next, we're going to be moving on to the research portion of our show. Thank you. the informational research portion of our show and with us today is Ralph Turciano. Ralph. Thank you for that intro. Mm -hmm. And the first article we have comes down to postpartum obesity. Otherwise, the baby fat after having a baby. Now what they discovered recently out of the European Congress on Obesity, yes there is a Congress on Obesity in Europe, that discovered that basically that's something very interesting called probiotics. Probiotics, especially Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium, what they discovered was this. This has nothing to do with exercise. A diet or calorie intake. All it was by getting these probiotics to women after they had a baby, and they followed it for one year. Those women that were taking those probiotics, Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria, for one year after, only 25% of them maintained any midsection obesity. Compared to the group that wasn't taking anything, 43% of them had midsection obesity. So they know just by using just two basic probiotics, something that used to be commonly found in our raw milk and dairy and cheese many years ago before we pasteurized and homogenized it to death, they made a tremendous difference in the obesity after having a baby. Pretty interesting, cheap, simple, extremely healthy. Now an interesting tie-in potentially to anxiety. A long time ago, I'd say probably about four or five years, that's a long time, one of the most common herbs for anxiety taken out there was kava. Well recently at Queensland University, or say Queensland in Australia, and in the journal of Springer Journal of Psychopharmacology, they have recently discovered that kava is safe and not only that, very effective. When compared to placebos, other antidepressants, other anti-anxieties, medications, what they discovered was this. The primary reason the cob was causing issues before in Europe was basically poorly made, especially cob that was extracted with acetone and ethanol. And on top of that, they tend to use the wrong parts. And they basically said, quote, our study used a water-soluble extract of the peeled rootstock of the medical cultivar of the plant which is approved for Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia and is currently legal in Australia for medicinal use. This is cheap, effective, and what they're hoping for is the ban be, be removed and that they found out the true cause. Well, good luck on that. Bone density, osteoporosis, more so than anything else, spinal fractures. What they discovered, another cheap thing, is by adding DHEA, which is a pro-hormone, to basically calcium and vitamin D, they were able to reduce spinal fractures down by 30 to 50 percent after one year. Also, in addition to one year, those who were taking calcium and vitamin D actually did get a good increase in bone density by 2 percent. But those who took DHEA, calcium, vitamin D combination, had a 4 percent increase in their bone mineral density overall. Now again, this study was primarily done just in women, and the benefits seem at this point to be only for women, especially since they drew the correlation between low bone density and low DHA levels in females themselves. Very simple, very inexpensive, but since DHEA is a pro-hormone, it's something I really would like you to consult your doctor ahead of time, especially for people that are prone to hormonal cancers, just to play it safe. And the woman took over two years with no noticeable side effects, but still, each person is different. Check with your medical practitioner first. All right, here's one for out there and all those people taking antacids, especially one, Prevacid. They've discovered one thing with some individuals have taken Prevacid for about six months or long and longer, and that was called chronic diarrhea. In fact, so bad, they was found out they were being diagnosed with colitis. Interesting part about it is when these individuals that have taken Prevacid were also being diagnosed with colitis, 
They were given the sulfa, uh, I should say, sulfasalazine for two grams a day to treat the colitis on top of that. And still, it came back after four to five months until one innovative doctor said, hey, you know what? Let's take them off the Prevacid and see what happens. Guess what? Almost immediately, the diarrhea stopped. And on top of that, the situation began to prove and, and the colitis began to go away almost immediately. Where are you going to find this article? You'll find this article in the May 7, 2009, World Journal of Gastroenterology. Very interesting. And that's a premise to OTC. Tons of people are taking it. They may have no, have no clue what's going on, but man, what a simple fix. This is something about not what you take, but what you don't take, if you can do it. And Ben, it was just, it was instantaneous. And they also said too, correct diagnosis and treatment without the knowledge of what this medication does, quote unquote, is impossible. So something to think about when you go to get a diagnosis. And they also said most doctors are fully unaware of it. All right, now here's one for midwives. Now the United States, about 99% of all births happen in hospitals. All right, and there seems to be extreme conflict between medical practitioners, or I should say doctors, and midwives. So they noticed there was a high level of premature births in this one town in Oregon, so they went to go see if it was the midwives who were causing it. They found the exact opposite to be true. In fact, what they said, they did basically, after the research, in fact, this is quote unquote, that the home births documented all had successful outcomes. Now this caused Oregon State University researchers to look into a little bit more. They found a chronic distrust, almost an antagonism toward midwives and trying to blame them for any infant mortality issues that may happen in the United States. By the way, the U.S. is about number one in infant mortality among all developed countries. Yet again, 99% of our births happen in hospitals. So then they looked a little bit further back and they wanted to compare it to a country that had a high level of midwifery or in-home births. Well, guess what? That would be like the Netherlands, where about one-third of all births take place with a midwife. In fact, how much less infant mortality than the United States? Well, guess what? About one-third. Something to think about and wonder why we have this such antagonism between those two groups. And then antidepressants. Once again, another article came out and found out they don't do any better than a placebo except for small subgroups. Yet they're still out there and they're still being marketed for something totally wrong. In fact, why? Well, they discovered that the drug companies were basically picking and choosing who they can use in these clinical trials. In fact, how much so? Well, they took 325 people who were depressed and they went to go see how they went with the clinical trials. Well, those drug companies would reject anybody that had depression for over two years. In fact, of the 325 people they took only accepted 9.2% for clinical trials. It's nice to have your own clinical trial when you can pick and choose the people you want to have the outcome come out the way it is. Something to reconsider. Try therapy, a good counseling, Something else, don't be stuck with a drug, especially one that doesn't work no matter how much your copay pays for it. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ralph. We appreciate the information. Once again, do your research, look up all the stuff we talk about, find out what's best for your, yourself, and discuss it with your healthcare professional. Thank you very much for joining our show.